friends, we're inside the Swordfish Cave. Now, when I first looked at this cave and I looked around and tried to find the symbols, I thought to myself, well, there's really not that much here. But then I spent about half an hour just looking at the walls and contemplating the scenery here, and they started appearing to me. I tell you, there is a lot of imagery here. Let me show you something right over here. This is why this cave is known as the Swordfish Cave. Right there in front of us, you can see the swordfish. Now, one of the interesting things about the swordfish, the way it's drawn is the red pigment is around the black, and then the black is enhanced, and the black part is the swordfish. You can actually see the sword right here. That's the sword end of the swordfish. This is really beautiful. Now, you might ask yourself, why is the swordfish here? Well, the swordfish figured prominently in much of the Chumash I guess mythology, so to speak. There have been shaman found buried in Chumash territory with the head of a swordfish buried with the shaman. The earth is calling our name. Here's another interesting symbol. You can see over here, I'll call it the, the pincers coming out of the head. And right over here, you can see the legs and then some kind of a tail. I believe this is some sort of insect. But look at this right over here. This is really interesting. When I first saw that, I said, this looks like an acorn. But this is actually a pictograph of a bear paw. Very classic. Okay, here's the back end. And here's where the line around the pad is, right here and then above it. And then right over here you can see the toes of the bear. This is a bear paw pictograph. This is really beautiful. And as I looked at this wall, I could see that there were images that were fading away. Hard to tell what they were. For example, this one right here was an image washed away. Right next to it there was another image that was washed away. But look at this right over here. This is beautiful. Again, I think this is the salamander image which also figures prominently in Chumash mythology, so to speak. But look at this here right at the bottom, which I found very interesting. Right over here, you can see these hash marks into the sandstone. Now their exact meaning has been lost in time, but oftentimes it was supposed that tools were sharpened because this is a sandstone. But look at this right over here. This is another form of symbol right here. Right there you can see that, and then right above those hash marks, Right over there, you can see these small little holes that were carved in there. Those were also placed here by the ancients that once roamed inside this cave. So all these are marks left by the hand of ancient man. I'll tell you, this is really fantastic. Now here's the interesting thing about the cave. You can see how it's built up over here. And if you look down underground, you could see that animals live here. Animals live here. You can see rodent nests right here and right up there and right up on that ledge over there that's a nest of a bird. So this cave is still habitated. Things still live here. So, but here's another interesting, very interesting thing here. Look at these markings right over here. Now again you can see some kind of circular dots and then it's, it's, you know, the equivalent of an up and down stroke right here. But look at this. This is really fascinating. This symbol right here, can you see it where my hand is? That is known as a Yoni symbol. It has something to do with fertility. It's supposed to represent the vulva. I'll tell you, this is really fantastic to be able to find one here, placed by the ancients at one time. So all these things that you're looking at are symbols left behind by the hand of a person hundreds if not thousands of years ago. So let's follow this cave wall. Let's see what else we can find. Again, I'm going to step back. I'm going to take a look up. There you have it. That's the swordfish. A beautiful pictograph. Now in front of the swordfish you can see another symbol. Another one right over here. Faded. Lost in time. As we go down the wall we're going to follow it here. You can see that there's a symbol right here. You can see the symbol right there. Let me come in real close. But let 
me show you one other thing over here. There was a symbol that I saw that uh, right over here, look at this wonderful symbol. I believe this is the symbol of the turtle. There's the head, so to speak, the arms to the side, and you can see this was the shell, the body, and the two little legs, the two little flippers back there. So this is really fantastic. Okay, let's turn around again and uh, find some other symbols that have faded in times. Right over here, you can see up there that there were some symbols. Again, those are faded in time. You can just barely see them, but oh my goodness, look at this. Right up here. I didn't even know this this before. Look at that symbol. And my initial thoughts was, oh my goodness, here is a second swordfish. In other words, right over here are the front fins, so to speak, and then the tail fin back here. And you see how the head is right here, pointy, and it keeps going, but then it fades away. But it's hard to tell. Is this also a swordfish? Look at this right here, and then right up here. So they look similar to me, but it's hard to tell because this one right over here in black is quite faded and might in fact have been superimposed because we see an element right over here that broke off and then painting over here. So it's hard to say did the painting come after, before, or at the same time. And you can see right over here there's other elements, red over here. And uh, well, to me it looks very similar uh, to the swordfish that we saw above us, but it's hard to tell. There's a lot of resemblance, but in fact it could be something else. I tell you, you know, you have to look at these once, twice, three. <laughs> Give yourself time. These symbols start coming out. Okay, right over here is another series of symbols. Again, faded in time. Right there is one right there. Again, lost in time. But look at this. As we come around over here, you can see that there was a symbol right over here. You see it right over here, this area? Okay. And again, there was a symbol here. Right now all I can see is red vertical lines. And then again, right next to it, you can see another symbol right over here that's faded and right over there that's faded. But look, as you look at this wall, look at these, what I would consider cupules right there, right there, and another one right there. Now these, I believe, are naturally occurring and then enhanced by man. The wonderful thing about this cave is we have pictographs and petroglyphs, all done by the hand of man. Now pictographs are painting, whereas petroglyphs are carving scrapings inside the rock or onto the rock, I should say. So we definitely have some symbolism over here. If you look at this, at one time, at one time, this incorporated a painting, you can see the red here, along with a petroglyph. So it's hard to say right now what the symbol was, but definitely around those two cupule hole marks there was a painting at one time. But look at this over here. If we look at the floor of the cave, you can see this box. It's been constructed to preserve the floor of this cave. And if we look inside, we can see a mortar. There you go. Isn't that fabulous? Well, friends, I hope you've enjoyed our journey together to Swordfish Cave as much as I have. And so I invite you to keep trekking with me as we visit ancient sites that time has long forgotten.